Welcome back everybody to a Cut Above Knife Sharpening YouTube channel. Today we've got a customer that has brought in a paper cutter and it is not cutting. So if you take a look, it is just holding the paper and that should be able to slice it. Now I can pull it into me and get it to cut. So we've got a bit of two issues here. We've got an alignment issue and we've got this edge not being squared up. We're just going to put an arrow to the edge that it's pointing out. That way we get it in the back in the same orientation as we took it off. Mark that one out so we again get it in the same orientation. That one's tight. I have to get creative to get that one out. So not everything goes smoothly every time. So what we're gonna have to do to get this screw out, we'll take a Dremel with a little cutoff wheel, we'll put a notch in there, then we'll be able to use this uh, standard screwdriver to get that out. So we'll get this put into the vise. Should be able to take standard flathead. And now we got the blade off. 
So now I'm just kind of inspecting it. I'm just looking for any nicks that have been taken out of it. And it's actually in really good shape. I do see where the edge is rolled over um, just ever so slightly. And that's what's creating that, that dull, dull edge for them. Again, this is the mating side. And there's no nick, so this will be really easy so to get a pretty thin up. blade. And we just want to make sure that we're holding this to a 90 degrees to the actual face of it. If we're getting off one edge, then it's going to start putting an edge on it, and it's not going to last very long. It'll cut, but it's going to dull out a lot quicker. If it's just 90 degrees flat, then it'll last a lot longer. So we're just looking at the surface. We want to make sure that it's staying true. And this is where taking your time is really going to pay off. You go too fast, you start messing up that surface. And what happens over time is it kind of curls those, those edges. It, um, they're not as sharp as they used to be in reference to a 90 degree angle. So if you imagine this, this is what it looks like on the inside. And over time, it actually gets a curve in there. And that's why it's folding that paper. We want it to be as close to a 90 degree as possible so that when they slice past each other, that they're actually doing the shear motion like a pair of scissors does. And if it's got that curve in there, then it's just going to fold it in between. Now you could do this on a machine like this, but I still think doing it by hand is the easiest way. A trick that you can do to make sure that you're getting across the whole surface if you're not used to doing this, take a Sharpie, blacken up that whole surface of the edge. Then when you take your file, you can see if you're flat. And as you see, it's already removed that entire black line. Now I also tell you if you're getting down below that curve, like I can see just a little bit right there at the tip. We just focus on that area a little bit more just to make it flat. I'm just kind of going across the whole length of it real lightly just to make sure we're even across it. You might feel just a very slight burr on that edge when you're on your finger along that way. That'll let you know that you have flattened out the top and it's starting to kind of curl over. But once we take that other pair and we shear down the side of it, it's going to cut that burr right off. Then it's going to be a perfect 90 degrees to each other. On this particular blade, most of them are 90 degrees to each other. This one's got a slight bevel to it. So what I'll do is I'll take it over here on the work sharp and I'll just run it across that.
I, it's going to be really hard to show on the camera, but I was able to see, I was just matching the angle that's on this blade here to on this belt. And when it was sharp, I could see that it's just making the ever so slightly of a burr on the back side. Again, like we talked about on the flatter side. And that lets you know that you've apexed it. It's the same for knife sharpening. You're running it until you can feel that that burr is there. That means that you've reached the, the edge of it. And it's starting to push that material over onto the other side. And that lets you know that you've reached that side. You're done with that side. So I'll just wipe it off. Then we'll just run it on the flat just to knock that burr off. Then this will be razor sharp. One other thing you can do, it's not super important, but just like you do a knife, you can strop that edge. It's going to give you a sharper and longer lasting edge. You just want to be super careful with these. There's not really a good way to hold on to them so you don't cut yourself. And you're just honing out that edge. That should have no problems cutting paper. So now we will get this all reassembled and give it a test. May have to do a little adjusting on it, but actually one thing I'm gonna do quick is that with that screw go that I had to cut, I'm actually just gonna cut a deeper groove into it. I didn't want to cut into the, the metal there. So I'll cut in a little bit deeper on that just so it's easier to take out next time. All right, so we got it mostly back together, but I wanted to point out, so the way these washers are stacked in here, they're actually, they're not flat washers. They kind of got a curve to them. So you got to pay attention when you're taking it apart uh, so that you put it back together the right way on this particular one. Some of them do have a spring in here, but this particular one's just got these washers that are, um, they're, they're called wave washers. And the way they stack in there is what gives it the tension. Um, then this nut, um, that's the one you're going to take down and, it's gonna give you the spring action to it so that it actually it kind of puts it into a shear motion. Then this one just locks it in. So once you get the tension that you want, you just lock it in with that one right there. Then there's this little set screw on the side here. And what that's doing is it's pushing against the side there so that it's gonna put that blade kind of into a bind. So. Um, what they call it is the set, the set of the blade. So you can fine tune adjust that and that's gonna give you the tension against this other cutting knife for better terms. And so when you push down on it, it's actually putting pressure that way so that it's actually shearing down. So you just kind of have to adjust it a little bit to get it to where you need it, but we'll get this the rest of the way together and we'll put a piece of paper in there and see if we got it. All right, we got it all put back together. I had to do a little bit of adjustment on this uh, back set screw to get it to cut properly. But now, see that this really thin paper slices it now. And that's without putting any pressure either way on this handle. Just straight down, it's cut in all the areas. So, if it cuts that, it should do this heavier butcher paper, no problem. That's craft paper. Double it up, no problem. Even four layers, no problem. So that's all there is to it. These are really easy to sharpen. Um, one thing to 
keep in mind is not all of them will be able to come apart. Uh, I've seen some where you can't take this arm off and it's got a tack weld on the back end. So it takes a little bit more time to get this side straightened out, but most of them can be sharpened. Um, they kind of design them that they're throwaway, but a um, little bit of time, a little bit of effort, you can get them sharpened and get them back to working and good again. So this one's ready to go back to the customer. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Um, if you hit the like button, subscribe, um, leave a comment down below what you want to see. If you got any comments, um, and thank you for watching. Thank you.